Hi, I'm Doug, and on behalf of Ernie Ball Music Man, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the second John Petrucci Signature Majesty Guitar Video. The goal of this video is to connect the dots between the design process that went into crafting this instrument, the resulting feature set, and some audio examples designed to demonstrate the massive range of tones this instrument puts under your fingertips. So let's get started. The fact that this is pretty much the only guitar that John's playing these days really speaks to the amount of dedication and hard work that went into crafting it. And the end result of a design process that spanned three years and 30 plus prototypes is an instrument that delivers all of John's go-to tones and a feature set that's perfect for virtually any style. The Majesty shares a number of things in common with the JP13. They're both available in a six and seven string model. They share the same neck shape, 17 inch radius, respective width at the nut and 24th frets, same electronics and exact same layout of the switches, but pretty much everything else on the Majesty is brand new. If I were to use one word to describe this instrument, it would be access. Access to a massive range of tones and a great layout, and literally unencumbered access from the first through the 24th fret. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna break this section down into tone widths, construction, hardware, electronics, controls, and switches, such that when we get to the demos, you're gonna know exactly how I'm using the feature set, such that when you get a chance to sit down with this instrument, you know exactly how all these controls function so you can get started crafting your own tones. One of the first things I noticed about this instrument was how well it transitioned between dirty rhythms and leads without having to step on a pedal if I didn't want to. And that has a lot to do with something that Sterling Ball would refer to as a tonewood cocktail. That is to say, finding the right blend of woods in the right balance. So again, you can transition between the different things you need an instrument to do without having to step on a pedal if you don't want to. At the heart of this tone is a tone core that runs from the bottom of the body through the luthier's joint of solid mahogany. Headstock's also mahogany. John wanted to have the basswood sides to ensure the instrument stayed warm in the lower mids. <laughs> and the maple cap such that you had the articulation of the pick. Add an ebony board and you've got a perfect tonewood cocktail. One of the key benefits of going with a neck through body construction was the ability to carve this crescent shape you see here in the neck joint. And if you take a look at the neck joint on the JP7 behind me, which is getting a little lonely these days, it's got a five bolt neck. It's got a lot of access to the top of the neck, but this instrument really takes it to the next level. One of the other things that's great about the Majesty is how comfortable it is to play sitting down. Bottom of the edge of the guitar is nice and flat, so it sits really well against your leg. The back of the guitar and the front of the guitar on the top edge are carved in such a way the guitar sits really well in against your body and your picking arm isn't fighting the construction of the body to get comfortable. It's also really well balanced. If you lean to the left or to the right for that matter, the guitar doesn't want to fall out of your lap. And generally speaking, an instrument that's this comfortable sitting down is equally comfortable standing up. There is also some bling factor going on. And if you take a look at the fret markers, you'll see that they are mirrored acrylic back. That's pretty cool. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in terms of construction is the maple cap. Somehow these guys figured out a way to laser etch the maple cap to make it look like carbon fiber. And if you take a look at that up close, you really see the amount of craftsmanship that went into building this guitar. All the hardware on the Majesty is finished in black pearl, including the tremolo, which has had a couple of updates. The brass block has been replaced with aluminum to make the guitar a little bit lighter. Didn't lose any sustain. The back plate there, the holes are bigger so it's easier to get a broken string out. John's tech Matty was a huge help as I prepared for this video. And one of the stories he shared with me was that when he first heard about the guitar, he was like, I hope it doesn't have a locking tremolo. The beauty about this tremolo is, first of all, it stays in tune really well, but changing strings is super fast. You push the string through the block, you pull it through, pull it taut, guide it through the locking tuner, pull it taut, clamp it down, stretch the string, and tune it, and you're done changing that string. Super fast. One of my favorite things about the way the controls are laid out on the face of the Majesty is that they follow the natural range of motion in your right hand. 
You don't have to look at the face of the guitar to find your way around, which is very convenient on a dark stage. As you look at the guitar from the side, you're going to notice that these controls are semi-countersunk into the face of the guitar, which means you're not going to hit something you don't want to. Going from top to bottom, the controls function as follows. This is a toggle switch that toggles in the upper position between the piezo pickup built into the bridge, the lower position between the DiMarzio illuminator pickups, which we're going to call the magnetic pickups, and in the middle position gives you the blend of the magnetic pickups and the piezo in the bridge. This is the three-way pickup selector for the magnetic pickups. Upper position is the neck pickup. Lower position is the bridge pickup. And of course, the middle position is the blend of them. This is the volume control for the magnetic pickups, and it has push-push functionality. In the lower position, just functions like a regular volume control. In the upper position, it activates the built-in boost in the preamp that's built into the guitar with up to 20 dB of boost that you can fine-tune. Pretty cool. This is the tone control for the magnetic pickups. It also has push-push functionality. The lower position just functions like a traditional tone control, again, only for the magnetic pickups. And the upper position, it gives you, when the guitar is in the middle position, just these two innermost coils. Very convenient. That means when it's up, in the neck position, you've got a full humbucking pickup. Bridge position, full humbucking. And in the middle position, again, those two innermost coils. It's humbucking, but it sounds a little bit more like the number two or four position of a single coil instrument, if you know what I'm saying. All right, this is the piezo volume control that also has dual functionality. When I flip the guitar over here and push that control down, in a moment, you're going to see a reddish-orange light illuminate. There you go. And then you're going to see it flash blue. And it flashed twice, telling you that the output jack is in stereo mode. If I press and hold that control down again, you're going to see it's going to light up that reddish-orange. And then it's going to flash blue just one time. Boom. And that's telling you again that now the output jack is in mono mode. All right, there's one last set of controls that are on the back panel here. They're kind of hidden down inside the cavity there, but what's really neat is if you use a screwdriver, you can get to them without taking off that back plate. All right, the top one is the amount of boost that you have for the preamp. Pretty convenient. Up to 20 dB of boost, and it sounds awesome. Below that, you have the blend for the piezo when the guitar is functioning in mono mode. And below that, you've got the treble and bass controls for the piezo pickup. Really nice to be able to adjust the tonality of that pickup. All right, so that gets us through the controls and the electronics, which means it's time for the demos. Early in the video, you got a chance to hear how incredibly warm this guitar is in the lower mids. <laughs> You also got a chance to hear how well it transitions between legato playing and sliding tap notes. It also does a great job of articulating fast picked runs. Even the neck position doesn't get tubby. And you can whammy the daylights out of it. So in this section, what I wanted to do was kind of demonstrate some of the other things this instrument is so good at doing. And we're going to start off with the piezo for something a little in the country end of things. This next one is a combination of the piezo and magnetic pickups together. For this one, we're going to use the neck position of the magnetic pickups using the first channel of the boogie for something with some slight jazzy overtones. This 
this one's going to give you a chance to hear the coil tap in the middle position using the Mesa Boogie Grid Slammer into the second channel of the boogie. For this one, we're going to move over to the bridge position and start off with the preamp on. We're going to move over to the second channel of the boogie. Got just a little bit of hair, and we're going to start off with more gain, and then I'm going to take the preamp off at the very end. You're going to get a chance to hear how well it shifts in terms of the dynamic range. <laughs> I'd like to take a quick moment and thank all the people and manufacturers without whom this video would not have been possible. And most importantly, on behalf of Ernie Ball Music Man, I'd like to thank you for watching. Cheers.